I'm Teo Salak, and I think maybe some of you know, some of you don't. Um, I don't know how to describe. I, uh, I joined um, politics uh, in 2006. So this is my second term. Uh, we just got elected um, from the GRC called Pasiris Pongo. Anyone saying in Sengkang? Uh, nobody. Okay. Oh, just, uh, I have two voters here. Thanks for the support. <laughs> um, before that, I, uh, I was a student in NYJC, Nanyang Junior College, which is right here. And I'm very glad to be back. It's still very rustic. And, uh, but the color of the uniform had changed a little bit. It was darker last time. Yeah, now it's lighter, right? Yeah. I think I prefer the lighter one. <laughs> so um, I'm glad to be here just to interact. And uh, I can see so many of you here. And I'm sure you have burning questions to ask me, right? Yeah, I just want to let you know that you can ask me anything at all. Anything, all right? And uh, you don't have to hold back. Uh, I'm one that I can take any questions. Whether my answers satisfy you or not, that's another question. <laughs> but uh, you don't have to worry about asking right or wrong question. No question is a silly question. As long as you're willing to learn, willing to be open and be receptive, I think we all can learn from one another. So I'm, I'm here not just to tell you an answer because I, I don't profess to know all the answers in the world, but I'm here also to learn from you and your thoughts and your thinking process and so that I can actually understand you a bit better and everybody talks about youth today isn't it you know whether the old the young or whatever all talk about the younger generation and all oh, we have been young before so honestly speaking um, my younger days i'm no different from you in uh, being adventurous you really want to experience something different i remember the days when i was in nyjc just that short two years um the re- one of the reasons why i chose nyjc was because it was nearer to my house my house is in long Yulian. i don't know whether you know long Yulian or us three-room flat I was living right there and then uh, it was nearer so I can cycle to to school and uh, because I'm always late <laughs> so there's this little corner at a, I don't know whether the P department is still there but there's a little corner in the P department just behind it I can always sneak through the fence la, push in the bike park one side lock the bike then go up but <laughs> every time the, I can't remember the discipline master's name but he will always catch me and say you you think you stand that side. Assembly is on the other side. So, quite pie say, you know. First few times, I, uh, I didn't know about that little corner, which is that the fence, and that there's this gap that I can go through the fence and go from the back door. I went from the front, and I was late. So, what happens is that they were all gathered at assembly. I have to cycle, and they saw me cycling <laughs> towards them. It's quite embarrassing when they're like, we're trying to sing the school anthem and national anthem, you're cycling there. So, <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> That was quite memorable, yeah. The other memorable thing about this place was uh, I met my wife here. Yeah, steady, yeah. Uh, one woman, man, uh, so don't have no doubts about it. Uh. That one works, uh, it works sometimes. I, mean, I really met my wife here, and we're opposites. Uh, I was just t- sharing the story a little bit. We're opposites. Um, I'm, I'm totally outdoors. Uh. I joined canoeing, I joined dragon boat, because Nanya was really good at that. Swimming, football, anything to do with outdoors, I'm actually there. My wife is totally the opposite. She joins the library. <laughs> Don't laugh. The uh, library is not bad. Uh. <laughs> because then I end up going to a library quite often. <laughs> because I know that she's always on the shift from Wednesday, 10.30 to 11.30. Yeah. Yeah. So I make sure uh, lecture is until 10. Then I make sure I don't miss. Uh, you know? 10, then I wait for a while, borrow some books and all that. But I never really read those books, lah, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes she takes care of the study area. Do you still have study area? Yeah, sometimes she takes care of the study area upstairs. I mean, I don't know how it's structured right now. I think architecture is quite different. And I'll be there studying. Lah. I'm really, I did study. <laughs> you know, I can't clear my exams, right? Yeah. So nevertheless, I uh, tell you a few things here and there, which I thought to lighten up the mood a bit so that you can be a bit more interactive and be open. I don't think I need to tell you more about leadership and all. I think you know enough. My interpretation of leadership uh, is actually very simple. If I have to dwell into that, I make it simple for all of us to have that uh, alignment and understanding is that for me, my 15 years before politics was in business. I've always been in business. I've lived overseas to do business. I've only come back to Singapore in the 2000s. Um, I've always wanted to live in China and work there, and I had my dream. And also had to thank NYJC because I managed to take Chinese at A-levels here, really honed my 
um, understanding about Chinese culture and literature and all the values of the Asian values and Chinese values. So I really, truly really love this subject. So when I went to China, it was um, in Chinese, it said, so I really could actually appreciate and I really enjoy the history and over there. But doing business is quite different there. So I did business there uh, and uh, did some entrepreneurial work. So it has been a corporate uh, experience that I had before politics. So now I'm actually back in business, literally in the trade industry. And I can say to me, leadership at the time was there's a difference. Huh? Simply put, a leader is not a manager, a manager is not a leader. So you're either a leader or a manager, you have to probably know your strengths and weaknesses to know whether which type are you. Some people think, uh, I'm a leader, but actually the person is a manager. You are just an administrator. You're given a, a job, you're given a, a task. And so you are task-oriented and you make sure you accomplish your task with your team. That's right. But there are managers who are leaders and they can inspire, they can bring value into the work and they actually make sure that they create additional value for each and every one and for the team. So those are the ones where people will follow, good times, bad times. And those are the ones, even if they are equal among their peers, you, could sh you can see that they shine, naturally shine. And uh, the, the way I look at it is that for the many leaders I know, and uh, from my own experience is that leaders are always the one that is very selfless. They are the one that gives out the most, they give most. They take the least and they embrace and they support. Those are the true leaders. In a football team, I um, mean, quite into football, I don't know. Who's uh, Barcelona? Uh, anybody? His favorite team is Barcelona? Nobody. Champions League coming, you know. <laughs> okay. In a football team, you know the football team, right? There are 11 players. One is a goalkeeper, then there's a, mid there's a defender, midfield, and striker, right? Who do you think is the leader? Is it the striker? No. Is it the one with the armband? Is it the one with the armband? Captain means the leader? Sometimes, yeah. Not necessarily the one with the armband, you know. Of course, that one is a leader. In a way, he's an administrative leader because he's got to get the team together and all the wears the armband, right? It's a captain. Anything the referee wants to do, he goes to the one with the armband. But the one in the field that maneuver and coordinates the whole team is the central defender or central midfielder because he could decide where to distribute. So... Let me just say, my, my son is very into football. <laughs> and, uh, and one of the days I asked him, why aren't you scoring goals? He said, because I'm in a position where I can decide who to score. So I said, why? Because he said, my coach plays me at the central defense or central midfield. I decide who will score because I'll pass to the one and he will score. I will decide the play that it should be. So 11 players all equal. It depends on where you play and how you play it and how you do it. So it really, to me, leadership can emerge anytime, can actually be shown anytime, can be displayed anytime, depending on the situation. And the question is that, are you one of them? Okay. So anyway, uh, I thought you better open up, better open up to the floor and uh, see if you have any questions for me. And uh, well, just throw up, no worries. Okay. Thank you.